Um, I want to first of all thank uh, Tim Duax for this next presentation because uh, Tim was uh, here a couple of years ago and then again last year and um, one of the things you know we're very keen on doing is sharing, um, sharing practice amongst us all so that we can uh, be inspired and see how uh, individual efforts become uh, very much larger when eventually they take root. And he, the other thing that we're after is impact, and the other thing we're hoping for is more presence in the public schools. And I think this next presentation is going to, I hope, capture all of those things together. It's how do we amplify ourselves for impact. And so we're really happy to have speak here today both Charlene Moore and Veronica Mancheno. And they're going to tell the story of how a strong community in Milwaukee was able to be built and around uh, how a strong school became part of a strong community or the strong community created the strong school. And we're very delighted to welcome them both. I hope you've read their bios. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail other than uh, the fact that Charlene is the executive director of Urban Underground, which is a youth program that has high expectations of the people they work with. And Veronica is the educational director of Highland Montessori Community School. And so well, I'd like you to welcome them both to talk to you about the journey and the things. Thank you so much. Good morning. Is it still morning? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, we have like a, what, eight-hour time zone difference. So I have to say we've been very acclimated uh, to Amsterdam. Um, uh, individually, you know, one of us have gotten left on the train and the other has got run over by a bike. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're now official. We're now official. <laughs> Good morning again. My name is Charlene Moore, uh, and I am currently, um, I have three children at Highland Community School. Uh, they each started in the toddler program. Uh, so they've been going to Highland ever since uh, they were uh, 18, 19 months old. Uh, so I've been part of uh, the, uh, the Highland Community School family uh, for many, many years now. Uh, and it's been such a beautiful um, opportunity and a beautiful experience being in a Montessori school. Um, thank you all so much for the opportunity of coming here today uh, and sharing our experiences. We are so honored uh, to be a part of um, this conference. And my name is Veronica. I'm also a parent at Highland Community School. My oldest son graduated from Highland from eighth grade two years ago, and my youngest son is in eighth grade currently. They, we came into Highland a little later. They were in first and third grade, um, and I became a parent first, as the story goes, very often at Highland, and then um, a teacher, and now an educational leader. Awesome. So we want to share with you all today just how um, the lessons that we've learned over the years and how um, Highland have become a, a force for change in Milwaukee. All right, so we're gonna start with just some geography. <laughs> okay, so um, we come from Milwaukee, which is a city in the middle of the United States. So if you look at our map, um, so anybody familiar with Chicago? Okay, some folk, okay. So when we're describing Milwaukee, we always say Chicago because people know where Chicago is. Uh, but Milwaukee uh, is north of Chicago. Uh, and Chicago is one of the largest cities uh, in the US. Ah. Milwaukee has a metropolitan population of one and a half million. Uh, in the city of Milwaukee, we have about 670,000 people. And in the central city, our largest ethnic groups are African American, Latin American descent, and white European. We are, the large, we are largely separated by race and income. Our central city is impoverished by American standards. We have all the urban problems you may be familiar with. Poverty, crime, drug abuse, 
poor nutrition, infant mortality, and racism. With all of this, there's about 170 schools within the city of Milwaukee. And Highland sits right in the center of that. This is our current building, located about 300 yards from our very first building. Highland was founded 50 years ago with a commitment to its local community and to the Montessori philosophy. Highland has continued to grow by providing Montessori's nurturing, socially responsible brand of education. We have gone from our original single CASA class of three and four year olds back in 1968 to a fully implemented Montessori program, toddler through adolescence. Thank you. And this just provides the um, background of the students, the ethnic backgrounds of the students that are at Highland. Highland Community School was born from the, from the effects of a small group of parents who wanted a new approach to education in the central west side of Milwaukee. The children and parents of Highland rallied around this new school despite local crime and socioeconomic hardships in the neighborhoods. Highland Community School was founded with a commitment to the neighborhoods and the Montessori philosophy of teaching. The school started as a Sunday school in a basement of a church in December of 1968 at the Victor Slitch Mansion on 20th Street and Highland Avenue. So that very first building where we're currently located, this for, um, or where we are now, this is the building that's located probably about three blocks from Highland. These are just a few, the next few images are just some renditions of how it was captured of the spaces that we were in. Highland continued to grow as the community brought, bought into Montessori's nurturing and socially responsible brand of education. Rallying on parents, um, relying on parents became an integral component of the daily operation of Highland and helped to set the standard for today's parent involvement requirement. In 1996, Highland became the first charter school in Milwaukee. Soon afterward, it moved to a historic Paps Mansion just 10 blocks away from its original site. While this wonderful spot at 30th and Highland successfully allowed us to continue our mission of developing community education, we began to outgrow that space too. Our search for a new home along Highland Avenue was successful in the spring of 2012. With the acquisition of the building at 17th and Highland Avenue, we made this building our Montessori home and are committed to our diverse community of learners and their families. With a current population of about 430 students, which includes our toddler program, the future of Highland Community School is sure to provide more exciting and inspiring stories for our extended family of lifelong learners. What makes us unique is, our parents are, is that our parents are the leaders and key decision makers of the school, and we are directly accountable for their vision. Parent involvement, involvement is the essential and key ingredient that make Highland like nowhere else. Um, we're gonna show just a really brief video on um, just our parents talking about Highland in its current day. Love it when technology works. Okay, maybe not. This is a very unique and special place. We're a family-centered Montessori school that is known for our nurturing and caring and respect for all of our children. In the Montessori classroom, the learning experience is a self-guided experience. So that's how we, we let the children kind of guide themselves and determine, you know, 
what they need to get out of the experience. Each child, in essence, has their own individualized education plan that they're working toward. 50% of the uh, teachers here are also parents at this school. It sounds so cheesy, parent-run school, and a lot of people don't know what that means, but that's exactly what it is. Kids are explorers. They like to look around. They like to see things that are different. They like to go within the environment. They like to pick up the materials and say, can you show me how to do this? I'd like to work with this material. They like to explore this. It's like landing on a planet they've never been on before within the classroom. The ideas that some schools are borrowing now from Montessori are just that we do need to be looking at the child more as an individual rather than as part of a larger group. We really look at each student as, as their own person and we attend to them that way. At one of our board meetings, when we were making the decision to grow Highland, we had a board member who said, let's make it as big as we can. Let's have three, four, five Highlands. Let's get all the kids in the city into Highland because we believe that it's that model for change. We believe that what we do here is so special and so effective and so enriching for kids that we want all the kids to have it. I can honestly say that there's never a day that goes by that when I wake up in the morning, I can't wait to get here because I love my job. I definitely feel like I'm changing the lives of these children. And the good part for me is I get to see it at the beginning. I get to be that influence at the beginning stages of their lives. And you know, hopefully, when we get that good start mother in my classroom, <laughs> we'll make great children for the rest of the world. that video huh oh. all right so um, just want to kind of go over a little bit more about our origins our mission and our vision um, so Highland has a really unique um, history in our city our mission we are a community of diverse families and educators working together to offer quality Montessori education in a nurturing environment that enriches, empowers, and inspires children to reach their full potential and encourages parents to become responsible for and involved with their children's life. And I remember revising and going over this mission because we wanted to make sure that it was um, inclusive of who it is that Highland is and what our outcomes, what we wanted for our children. Our vision changing the world by nurturing children and their families to be informed, compassionate, lifelong learners who are a force for change in education, the community, and society. This picture was actually, the picture that accompanies this, uh, this slide um, was actually taken um, during uh, the national school walkout where students, where our students wanted to participate um, in supporting um, and advocating for gun reform. So this was a really special moment. Okay. The prime factor in creating a public Montessori school was a 1976 federal government court order mandating that Milwaukee public schools desegregate its schools. Montessori was one of several educational models selected. The first government-run Montessori school, McDowell, was established just three blocks from Highland Community School. Parents who enrolled their children into McDowell recognized an excellent educational opportunity. Parent advocacy led the Milwaukee Board of School Directors to gradually open additional Montessori schools. As Highland has grown, so has the Montessori movement in the city. Currently, there are over 3,700 Montessori students in eight local government-operated schools and another 1,000 in privately run schools. Highland was also driving this Montessori expansive expansion in the early years. Parents united the desire for Montessori education. 
The school's three organizing themes of integration, parent power, and Montessori education gained recognition across the city. Before the school became a charter in 1995, tuition was scale-based and parents paid what they could and subsidized what they couldn't in parent hours. In 1996, the school became the first independent charter school in Wisconsin, funded by Milwaukee Public Schools. Control of the school has been retained by its parent board. And again, that's a huge difference in the city that Highland has, um, that I know of, the only parent, parent, fully parent-run board school in the city. So we talk about why expanding. Research showed solid, solid results in ex academic achievement for African-American children living in poverty. This paved the way for other educational models. Some examples include language immersion, environmental education, and gifted and talented programs. Um, and for those of you that have never been to the city of Milwaukee, Milwaukee is very segregated. So um, individuals that of our Latin American descent live on one side of the city, they live on the south side. Um, African American live on the north side. It's very, very segregated. So it's important that we were developing models um, that was inclusive of um, um, poor uh, and students of color. So what I would like to talk about now is what are some of the obstacles that we face as a um, public um, government-run school? And I'm just going to stand to the side because, you know, um, you may not see me if I'm behind the computer. <laughs> That's the only reason why. Um, and I want to focus on just two. Um, there are many, many things that we can think of obstacles, but I really just want to focus on two. Um, the first obstacle we face at Highland is, of course, the state-mandated testing, the standardized state-mandated testing. I um, listed three um, of the tests that we have to take. Um, and I would love, um, when we say academic subjects, forward is once a year, is the state wide testing. For each academic subject, there is more than one session. So language has three sessions. The first session of language is 45 minutes. The second is 30 minutes. The third is 30 minutes. Um, and you know, so we couldn't just count it per hours that a child is taken out of the classroom for a test. In a Montessori classroom, that disrupts the whole environment. So we're taking a group of children out for a test, then the other child that may have been left behind can do their group work because they're the classmate left, right? So we actually count them in morning work periods. A rough estimate of morning work periods that are pretty much done for the day. We can't do any work in that morning work period. It's eight morning work periods for forward testing, which is once a year, and nine morning work periods for start testing, which is the district benchmark that we have to do three times per year. Uh, that's a total of 17 morning work periods. And if you are a Montessori teacher, you know what happens to your afternoon work period after the morning work period got completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's 17, pretty much 17 school days that we spend testing. Our second largest obstacle is then the state mandated um, way of intervention of students. So the state will look at the standardized scores and they ask us to look at this and say, you're from your 25th to the 35th percentile, there's going to be your second tier of students. That means that you are going to, um, according to the state, you are going to give them interventions on basic academic skills two times per week for 30 minutes each time. From below 25th percentile, you're going to give your children intensive basic academic skills three times per week for 30 minutes each time, and you're going to test them every other week. So if you think of the effects of poverty on a child, or trauma, or um, violent neighborhoods, um, you're probably not worrying about reading and writing and doing math calculations, which means you probably have really low basic academic skills. So now you're going to be seated in front of a computer more often than your peers. That is a huge obstacle. 
But at Highland, we truly believe that obstacles are also the source of opportunity. What do we do? We ask our parents, what do our parents want for their child's education? Yes, they want their children to know how to read, to write, to do basic math. But our parents overwhelmingly also wanted critical thinkers. They wanted their children to have confidence. They wanted their children to be able to get along with anyone. They wanted their children to love learning. Okay, so what do we do now? The state wants us to do this. Our parents want us to do this. You get the minds at work. Traditionally trained teachers that truly understand Montessori pedagogy, curriculum, and are Montessori trained are usually really good minds to work with because what we need to do is combine these two so that we can create a model that takes care of everything. Um, a very complex model. Uh, we ended up creating something that is called the family model. And it really took care of a lot of things one of them being intervention. So in our family model, which is very unique, we are trying to include the adult into the learning environment, not put the ch pull the child out of the learning environment. In all other, even unfortunately, Montessori public schools that are not run by parents, they do have to pull the child out and sit them in front of a computer for basic academic, basic reading skills per se. At Highland Community School, we have an adult that focuses completely on these basic skills, but this adult comes into the learning environment, stays in that learning environment, they sit at the table. Often, they, if there's, they have their child, you know, child X, and they need to work on these skills, and they're looking, they observe, oh, I can, I can do those skills with that lesson they're doing, so they go by the child, they will sit on the floor or at the table, and work that intervention right there when it's needed. It requires first to have full-time adults that are trained that can do this. Um, they're not Montessori trained, but they are trained in observation. And they come in and are willing to truly respect the child and their child's work. It's an immense amount of flexibility because there is 410 children. And you have to get to all of, the, all of the bottom 25th percentile in one week, two times or three times for 20, 30 minutes each time. This family model um, also includes social emotional. So we don't only do, we have to do reading and math. But we also feel that it's extremely important for us that we look at the social component, at the emotions. So we started actually using maths this year and we have a full-time adult who does this, who looks at the children that it could be their family, it could be trauma, it could be many, many things. We, we can't diagnose that, but we know that in the classroom they struggle. Instead of like, you're not behaving, you're going to the principal's office, we have a community resource room. The adult can go in, say, hey, you ready for a break? You ready to come meet me? Or there has been a scheduled meeting with this adult already who we are blessed to have a Montessori trained teacher do this. And they can lead the, the child or a small group of children to a community resource center where they will do mindfulness, where they will do um, games that work on memory or self-regulation. Um, and then we can transition back into the classroom. Um, so that is also very unique to Highland. Um, all these unique things makes Highland a force amplifier of Montessori. Um, and these are just some of the things that amplifies Montessori to the city. First of all, our parents inside the school, um, as you saw in the video, more than half our parents are staff members. Charlene is a parent, I am a parent. We parent and teach each other's children. Um, then how we collaborate with community organizations, how we grow our schools, how we enrich our environments, and back again to our parents, how our parents advocate outside of the school onto the community. Yeah. All right. So again, um, our parents are a huge component of the school. That was one thing that I loved about Highland when um, I was looking for a school for my children. Um, 
it's important that parents participate and that they also understand. Uh, so there's absolutely um, daily contact um, with the classroom staff. Uh, parents are always welcomed. There is no, well, do I need to set up or schedule an appointment with you, you know, to, um, to sit in the classroom? Parents are always welcomed and a part of Highland Community School. Also the leadership. Uh, there are so many different leadership opportunities. Again, there's a fully parent-run board, so you have leadership opportunities that um, range from governance, governance type um, opportunities, being a part of like the fund development or the finance um, committee, or um, it ranges all the way from uh, being on the admissions committee or the parent engagement or social justice committee. There are so many different opportunities um, that depending, you know, that it doesn't matter what your schedule is, you, there's always a way for you to be involved um, at Highland. And, you know, throughout the city, we're one of the schools that have a very high parent engagement. You, um, parents don't just drop off their children at Highland. They actually have to come to the classroom. Um, you know, the, the, the teachers then uh, shake hands with the children, greet the children. Um, and it's also a way for parents to build relationships with that teacher. They get to see those individuals and adults every day that are dropping off those children. So it provides a, a larger community. Um, this is, an, uh, uh, again, parent participate in all schools life. This is a picture of uh, our upper elementary camping trip. And this is tent camping. Now I have not volunteered for tent camping yet. Yeah. <laughs> All my kids have asked me, and I'm like, maybe next year. <laughs> maybe I'll come next year. But again, it's such a beautiful way. Um, all are from, you know, uh, lower elementary and children's house, everyone gets an opportunity to do these amazing, you know, field trips from one day opportunities or one overnight opportunities in cabins um, for the younger children to as they get older, they get an opportunity to do outside camping. Um, also, a huge part of uh, what makes us who we are, the collaborations and the partnerships that we have. Uh, we have so many meaningful participation or collaborations um, um, that our school engages in that ranges from, you know, partnerships with the Public Museum uh, to Growing Power, which is um, Will Allen, who is a national um, expert on um, environmental education, uh, to Montessori training centers. We always, always, always make sure that we build those relationships with our community and our partners. We've grown our school very strategically. So we start with one classroom at a time, toddlers, apparel. We went into the adolescent program. Um, when we started a new classroom, we looked at only starting with the youngest age of that level, say if it's an upper elementary classroom with only the nine-year-olds, um, and then only a little over a third. So if a classroom is roughly 30 students, then we start with, say, 13. 13 nine-year-olds, and then we build that classroom. That was pretty critical for growing the culture of, of that classroom. Um, then we went into, the, into our adolescent program, um, and we are very also intentional about how we, the flow or the continuum of our programming. For example, camping, the picture you saw was a three-night tent camping. The children actually start their camping experience when they're five years old. Is a one overnight cabin camping? in lower elementary is two overnight cabin camping. Upper elementary is three nights tent camping. Adults are mostly in charge of the actual cooking. The children help serve and clean up. Adolescents, three overnight tent camping, they feed themselves. The same thing happens for trips. We truly believe in cosmic education and elementary age, they want to explore the world. So how do we take them to the world. Um, again, our context is inner city children. So we start with third grade project, and that's our capstone for lower elementary. So the, the eight-year-olds um, present these projects in a public place, say a museum. Then when they're in sixth grade, we take them to New York. We are in model, Montessori, so MMUN, 
every year, that's every fourth grader is we and we do have to label them by grades. I know that's not really what we would like to, but every fourth grader is looking forward to sixth grade because they go to MMUN. It's a big deal. And by the time they're adolescents, in eighth grade, they go to Costa Rica. So we go from looking at our local communities in Milwaukee as a third grader and what it looks like. As a sixth grader, you're representing another country, discussing with young people from another country. And by the time you get to eighth grade, you're going to talk about how policies uh, impact environment and impact culture for sustainable practices on the growing of coffee. Um, these are some of the, the, the pictures on how we would enrich our school. This is actually the outside. The first picture you saw of Highland, it doesn't look like that anymore. Um, we've had our hands on that building. Um, but we spend a lot of time beautifying and taking care of the grounds. So the groundwork that we do, we have two hoop houses. And I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to back up on that one, sorry. I have to read all these. I don't know these off the top of my head. We have three bios wells that take care of 365 square meters of rainwater. We've planted, parents have planted, parents and students have planted 22,438 square meters of native prairie right in the center of Milwaukee. We have two hoop houses that have been built by students. Um, we have a solar cart that was designed and built by students. Um, Highland Community School, because of our parent advocacy, is a founding school of the Green Schools Consortium of Milwaukee. And last year, Highland Community School won the City's Better Building Challenge of occup for Occupant Engagement. And this was all our parent involvement and our parent advocacy. Yeah. Thank you. Back. How do we enrich our inside environments? And as you can see, none of those pictures are of the classroom. So another obstacle could be like, what do you do with art? What do you do with language? What do you do? You know, those are, these are all pullouts. We actually have full-time expertise in their subject, in their area. So we have an artist, and she's our visual artist um, person, and she has a studio. And she comes into the classrooms, or the children schedule studio time especially for those large projects. We have a performing arts teacher, and he has a black box um, room, a theater. He also happens to be a Montessori trained teacher. And we have a geologist who knows everything you want to know about rocks. Um, he built with the students a cabin. He built a cabin, and in the winter, they go out to the cabin, and they light a fire, and they hear and listen and talk to s about stories. A lot of our stories, um, great stories, happen in that cabin. Um, and our, um, our sixth graders also become docents of the museum. So that's how we are enrichment, uh, enriching our classroom environment, by taking our children to explore the world. Our parents have advocated for a number of things. These are some of the things that are present through the committees that um, Charlene was speaking about, and often through what's needed at the moment that's needed. So if you know of the reality of the United States and school shootings, um, gun, gun control has become a big deal, and it became a big deal for our students. It became a huge deal for our parents. So I've tried, we've tried to represent a lot of what our parents have done, but we would like you to see a, um, a little over four minute video on one of our parents. Uh, the video was completely edited by our adolescent students. My name is Brenda D. Went, and I am a um, alumni parent and now current employee. I have three sons who attended Highland, um, Owen, Brian, and Justin DeWent. Owen was, uh, is the oldest and he started here in 1983. And uh, Brian, of course, started in 85. And then uh, Justin, the youngest one, I think started in 88, something like that. So I started in uh, 85 when I was two years old. I remember the classroom. Uh, we had a really unique, like, three-part classroom. There were three rooms that were all connected. Um, 
one was like a loft. Um, but I, I, I remember my friends. I, I always remember camping. Um, but there's actually a handful of my friends that from Highland that I still keep in touch with today. Um, there's one that I play basketball with still pretty regularly. Um, yeah, and those are all relationships, uh, friendships that I have formed at Highland many, many years ago. I, I started out at 80, I want to say 88, and then I came back, I worked for five years, and then I came back in 98, so. And then you've stayed since then. I've been here since then. I had to face it, this is home. I now have two grandchildren here, uh, Brian DeWent Jr. and Brie L., who is um, a toddler, which is, um, she's 15 month, and then Brian is um, K-5 and he's six. I think because of uh, the type of education that it is, I quickly saw that my children were learning a lot different from what I had learned and what I'd seen other children learn, you know, the way they learn, and it was, bringing about a change in them that I didn't that I didn't have to offer, which was helpful for, for me, and that was one of the other reasons why I think I started to hang out, so I can try to learn how to be a better parent than what I knew how to be. When my wife and I had kids, I, you know, was like, letting her know, and she's a traditional school teacher, mm -hmm. but um, how important it was for me to have Brian Jr. Um, in a Montessori school because of those freedoms and being able to um, work on things that he was interested in um, and take those to the next level. You know, that's another thing. Like, I remember doing field trips uh, or walking to Linden Hill, um, doing projects or planting bulbs, onion bulbs in the park, you know, because that's what me and some friends were interested in. It doesn't have to be something that all the classroom is working on one thing at one time. One of our state representative, Dismas Becker, at the time, his daughter had heard about Highland and she had a son about my son's age, Owen, and she was telling us, she and another, uh, she was telling me about it, Highland being such an awesome place to have your kids go to. Um, and at that time, I was like, for me, I had never heard of Montessori. It was not about Montessori for me. It was like a place for my child to go so I can get a piece, of, a minute of rest. <laughs> uh, which I tell that story because of, it's the truth, but in the end found out that it was the perfect place for me as well. Think yeah. about that all the time. Um, the fact that what it's done and uh actually nate kirchick was a friend of mine and he sent me a text uh, this was years ago but he talks about his experiences through his life and his kid. and if he ever has kids he would hope that they could be they don't live in milwaukee anymore but he's like you know if i can find something like highland something montessori with that same community feel um and montessori um background that he would definitely you like without a doubt because he's like you know you might question these decisions you made in your life, he's like, I'll never question what Highland did for my family. So Highland is, um, so Highland will be 50 years old. Um, that means that what you see today, it's not just the work of just a few people in the last five years or in the last 10 years. Um, one of my favorite principles or concepts of cosmic education was the unknown person. Um, and I'm gonna get a little emotional here. <laughs> um, to be grateful to the unknown, the, the work and the dedication of hundreds of adults who believed that truly Montessori is the peaceful education that we want to give children. That children from middle class, low class, white, black, Latinos, they can all be in the same room. Yes. Adults who believed in that and stuck through it, this was not easy work. It was not a walk in the park. It's not now. It never was before. Yesterday, the term, uh, we were standing on the shoulders of gi giants, I heard. 
And that's exactly how I felt today. I know it's exactly how Shalin feels. We are standing today in the shoulders of giant. Now, once in a while, you get a rare opportunity to make the unknown known. And some of those giants are actually sitting amongst us. And I would like to extend to them a deep, deep thank you and gratefulness. And I would like to start with Tim and Kathy. If you could please stand, stand. up. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Tim was, um, if not the first, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the first VISTA volunteers to Highland since 1968. And Tim, from the conversation I heard the other day uh, over dinner, dragged a bunch of people into Montessori world. Uh, that's all I've heard. If it wasn't for Tim, I wouldn't be in Montessori. Um, Kathy was my son's teacher was Charlene's son's teacher. Um, so there is not only a personal connection, which is what is so unique to Highland, but a, a, a gratefulness for all the work that you've done. Yeah. There's some other giants that I would like to um, extend a huge thankful. Thank, thank you. So again, um, we are so grateful um, and thankful for all the individuals that have um, per, been such a huge component of Highland Community School. Uh, we would like to call these individuals up. Uh, if uh, Carol, Carol Hicks, if you're here, if you can come up. <laughs> Carol was a former Montessori teacher and trainer. And she's in the picture. You yeah. If you <laughs> Joan Bettman. Joan, if you can come up. Joan was also a former Montessori teacher and trainer. And Alan Travis. Alan, if you can come up. And Alan is our Montessori trainer from Milwaukee. So as we express, right, so as we express our gratitude, um, that is one of the things that Highland does very well. We love to appreciate the parents that, you know, give up their time and their energy to make our community what it is. And ladies, thank you so much, Tim and Kathy. Thank you so much for bringing Highland to 50 years. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a model that's absolutely incredible. The energy that came from the two of you just brings the passion of what you experience every day to us. And I would like to recommend that we take this passion, we bottle it just a little bit, and we also take the lessons that we've learned today from this particular extraordinary example of how to root something so deeply in your community that it belongs not to any one person, but it belongs to the history, it belongs to the future of a community that will never let it die. So this is really an incredible thing, and we thank you for coming and for representing that here, and we promise to take what you've given us and use what we've learned in other places so that you can tell your community that they are a force amplifier, yes. not just inside their own area, 
but certainly now uh, way beyond that. So thank you so very, very much. Thank, thank, you. thank 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 you.